Hello and welcome back to my channel, Crafty Concepts with Erin. I'm Erin and I'm here with the creative design team bringing you creative ways to add layers to your projects. I am a big fan of the layered looks, so I have grabbed several papers. We have In Full Bloom and then we have some from the current mix-ins. I have one photo and we're going to create a single page layout today, so let me grab my Versamat. I am going to start my layout on a sheet of white daisy cardstock and I am scrap lifting this. I totally, the gal's name has escaped me, but I will leave it listed in the description box below. We're going to create several torn layers. So I've grabbed a piece from the current mix-in paper pack here. It's got this kind of driftwood look on one side and kind of a gray flannel sweatshirt on the other. And I marked right at seven and a half inches. And I'm using my water brush to paint from about an inch and a half down to that point I created there. And I'm using the water brush because when you moisten the paper, it helps encourage it to tear where you drew your water line. So if you want very intentional tears, which I do for this particular uh, scrapbook layout, this is a very helpful technique. So this piece of paper started out at four and a half inches by 12. And again, I'm tearing about one and a half inches down over to the seven and a half mark here. So I'm just carefully ripping along. I did speed this up, but take your time and go right to that point. Now I have this gorgeous floral paper from In Full Bloom. We're going to repeat the process. I'm just kind of drawing my little pencil dot there so I have a guide. And now I'm just tearing about, just not even quite an inch down. This paper does not need to go all the way to the top of my base layer, if that makes sense. We just need it to go to where it's going to peek out from underneath that first layer, and then we're going to create a third layer with this avocado stripe paper. So just drawing a little line, I tried to draw it with my water brush, that, that didn't work. So now I thought maybe I'll bring in my ruler, just experimenting with some different paper tearing techniques, and paint our little water line, and then tear. And this definitely was the easiest way to accomplish this tear, since I did want a very precise edge. Off camera, I will tear the opposite side and repeat the process on the bottom, but you'll notice the bottom is a little bit shorter. That first layer is only two inches rather than the four and a half inches I had on the top of the layout. Now I'm just taking my fingernail and I'm roughing up the edges and just kind of wrinkling them and scrunching them and just giving them some more texture. Um, you know, there's no right or wrong way to do this. So we're just going on each layer and just taking our time. My photo is going to sit right about there, but I do want to map that. So I've grabbed a piece of Glacier. This is another paper from the current mixing collection. I love this paper. I'm thinking this black text, I almost hate to cut into it. Do you ever have a piece of paper you just, you don't wanna cut it? So I got this center out to save every last little bit, and I'll just use my tape runner to adhere my Glacier cardstock to this word background paper here just for that pop of black. Get that lined up, I think that's going to look good. And now, we're going to add some splatter before we add our layers with our embellishments. So I'm gonna bring in my all-purpose mat, set my photo to the side, and I have my black shimmer brush. Give that a really good shake, and you'll need something to tap it with. And because I didn't have the you know foresight to add my splatter ahead of time, I'm gonna use this inexpensive printer paper to mask off where I don't want the splatter. I'm starting where my photo is going to sit and I'm tap, tap, tapping to the left and I'll repeat that to the right so it looks like my splatter is originating from underneath the photo and kind of spreading outward. This in itself is a layer. It doesn't have to be like physical layers that you put on. It can be, you know, texture through shimmer brush or stenciling and things of that nature. So now we're ready to bring in even more layers with our uh, embellishments and I am working with the In Full Bloom workshop. So I have all of these fun bonus pieces that are just kind of ready to go. Many of you refer to these as ephemera or die cuts and it's so fun to build these floral clusters and I really enjoy this process. So I'm just going to kind of nestle when you're layering. I like to put some of them behind my photo and then some of them on top. I like the way that's kind of creating an L shape in the lower right hand corner. And see this one's gonna go on top. I'm gonna put that one behind it. 
and then maybe this butterfly up there and we'll tuck some leaves in. So, you know, I'm just dry fitting everything. I'm not using adhesive yet, so I can very easily move these around. Having all these pieces ready to go definitely speeds up the process and there's a coordinating stamp set too. So if you use up all your stickers and your die cut pieces, you can easily make more. There are also these black kind of paperboard chipboard style die cuts and there's leaves and butterflies and hearts all sorts of different shapes in here and I just love the way the black looks so I'm going to bring in more of that just tucking a few bits and pieces of it into each cluster. Now this little film strip piece I think is just so cool. There is a die that cuts this in the In Full Bloom card making workshop and that's everybody's favorite piece. So it's just really cool, but you do get one in the chipboard pieces. So I grab my pickup tool and I'm just picking up some of these little hearts to scatter around the different clusters. I'm looking through, there's a single leaf there. We'll tuck that little guy right up top here. Just creating more layers with these different pieces here. So I still need a title. So I grabbed this from the coordinating sticker sheet. It says live in full bloom. And I thought that would be fun just kind of hanging over the photo here. And I'm going to bring in some 3D foam dots. And this is going to help me play up the layers. I also have some liquid glue. I'm going to adhere some of the pieces directly to the base layer. And then we'll pop some up really just highlighting the different layers in the cluster. So we have those ruffled torn edges of our layered paper and then all of our layered floral pieces and I think everything works together for a very fun look. Fun story behind the photo, we're all wearing different shades of green because it was a St. Patrick's Day celebration. We attended Murphy's Irish Days and you guys, it is so fun. They close down the main street of this cute little town and they have Celtic music and food and vendors and wine tasting and it's just a really fun atmosphere. I am Irish and I was actually born on St. Patrick's Day. So it's always a fun, you know, festive celebration around my birthday. So that works out well for me. We probably stayed a little bit too long and maybe had one too many different wine tasting samples. But, you know, we had a good time and I hope that we go back and do it again because it was super fun. So I have all of my layers adhered. I'm just gonna tack down these hearts with some liquid glue and I still need to add my journaling. So let me clear this out of the way. There is this little journaling block that came with the workshop and I thought of tucking that in there and just writing on those lines and I think that would look good. But then I decided to print it out on my Avery Matte Clear shipping label. So I'm gonna peel off the back here and then lay this down. I'm gonna kind of tuck it underneath my little paper, torn paper layer, and then grab my scissors. I don't want this going up over my little chipboard film strip die cut, so I'm just gonna cut right along the edge and then adhere that flush. I do recommend you grab your bone folder and then just kind of, you know, rub it along and then that adhesive sticker just disappears and it looks like it's printed right on the background. You guys, this stuff is so, Fun and easy to use and I love the way it looks. I grabbed my liquid pearls in the robin's egg color and I'm adding a few little dots around the clusters in like little groups of three. So I'll do some around the hearts and then down at the heart at the bottom of the page and then some just kind of tucked in at the edges of the flowers. Just another little detail, another layer to the embellishment cluster and I think it looks really pretty. I love these liquid pearls. You do wanna do them absolutely last so you don't smear them. For those of you that are still with me, I would love it if you would give me a thumbs up and click that like button that tells YouTube know you're enjoying the content and helps my channel to grow. But before you go, I do want to remind you guys that the creative design team has reopened enrollment for their membership group. It's a limited time only for the month of March, but you will have exclusive access to technique-based classes packed with tons of ideas to get your creativity going, learn new skills. There's also monthly challenges, tip videos, and a whole lot more. Next up is Janice. You're not going to want to miss out on her project tomorrow, and you can catch the rest of the Creative Design Team playlist here. Be sure to check the description box below for all the details on the membership group.